Com Edu. Easy Story House. Elementary Level. Once upon a time, a poor peasant and his wife were sitting by the fireplace. The peasant poked the fire while his wife was knitting a sweater. He said, "How sad it is that we have no children. Our home is so quiet, but other houses are noisy and cheerful." Yes, answered his wife, and she sighed. Even if we had only one, and it were as small as my thumb, I would be quite happy. We would love it with all our hearts. Now, some time after this, the wife got her wish. She had a little boy who was strong and healthy, but was no bigger than a thumb. Then they said, "Well, as small as he is." We will love him dearly. They called him Tom Thumb because he was so tiny. They gave him everything he wanted, yet still the child didn't grow bigger. However, Tom Thumb was very intelligent. He soon showed he was a clever boy. He was lucky in everything he tried. One day, the peasant was going to go into the forest to cut some wood. He said to himself, "I wish I had someone to bring the cart after me." Hearing this, Tom Thumb said, "Oh, father, I will soon bring it. You leave it to me." Then the peasant laughed and said, <laughs> "How can you? You are much too small." You can't even hold the horse's strap. That doesn't matter. If Mother will put the harness on the horse, then I will sit in his ear and tell him where to go. Answered Tom. Very well, said the father. I'll let you try it once. The mother put the harness on the horse and set Tom in its ear. Then little Tom Thumb called out. Giddy up, and whoa! In turn, he told it where to go. It went quite well, like it was being driven by its master. And so they went right to the woods in no time. Now, while the cart was turning a corner, and Tom was calling to the horse, two strange men appeared on the scene. My goodness," said one. "What is this? There goes a cart, and a driver is calling to the horse, but no one can be seen. There is something strange about this," said the other. "Let's follow the cart and see where it stops." The cart went on deep into the forest and stopped in front of the peasant. Tom said, "You see, father, here I am with the cart." The father smiled and helped Tom get down from the horse's ear. When the two strangers saw him, they were too shocked to speak. Then one said, "That little boy might make us rich if we showed him in town for money. We must buy him." So they went up to the peasant and said, "Sell us the little man. We will take good care of him." No," said the peasant. "He is the apple of my eye, and I won't sell him for all the gold in the world." However, when Tom Thumb heard the offer. He climbed up to his father's shoulder and whispered in his ear, "Father, let me go. I will soon come back again." So his father gave him to the two men for a fine piece of gold. "Where will you sit?" they asked him. "Oh, put me on the brim of your hat. Then I can see the neighborhood without falling down," 
said Tom. They did as he wished, and Tom said goodbye to his worried father. They walked until it got dark. Then Tom said, "You must lift me down." Stay where you are," answered the man who had Tom on his head. "No," said Tom. "I must come down. Please let me down now." The man took off his hat and set Tom down on the field. He walked about for a while here and there in the dirt and grass. Then suddenly, he jumped into a mouse hole that he found. Good evening, gentlemen. Just go home without me, he teased them. The two men ran about looking for Tom. They poked into the mouse hole with sticks, but with no luck. Tom went further and further into the hole. The day grew quite dark, and they were forced to go home. They gave up, full of anger, and with empty wallets. When Tom saw that they left, he climbed out of the mouse hole. He thought it was too dangerous to walk in the field in the dark. He thought, "I might break my leg or my neck." Luckily. He came to an empty snail shell. Thank goodness, he said. I can pass the night in safety here. He crawled in the shell and sat down. Just as Tom was about to go to sleep, he heard two men pass by. One said, "How shall we steal the rich minister's gold and silver?" I can tell you. Interrupted Tom. What was that? Said the other robber with fright. I heard someone speak. Then Tom spoke again. Take me with you, and I will help you. Where are you? They asked. Just look on the ground. I am standing by a shell. Answered Tom. The thieves found him and lifted him up. You are so tiny. How are you going to help us? They said, "I will go in between the iron bars in the minister's room, and will give you what you want." Said Tom. All right. They said, "We will see what you can do." When they came to the minister's house, Tom went into the room very quietly. Then he called out with all his strength to the thieves. Do you want everything that is here? The thieves were frightened and whispered, "Speak softly. Don't wake anyone." But Tom pretended not to understand and shouted again, "What do you want? Everything?" This time the thieves were really scared. But they whispered back. Now, be serious and give us something. Then Tom shouted again, as loud as he could. I will give you everything if you hold out your hands. The maid who was awake heard Tom very clearly. She jumped out of bed and hurried to the door. The thieves saw someone coming. They turned and ran away. They ran as fast as they could. But the maid couldn't see anything because of the dark. So she went to get a light. Before she came back with it, Tom slipped out into the barn. The maid searched every corner and found nothing. She went to bed again, thinking that it was only her imagination. In the barn, Tom Thumb climbed about in the hay, and found a nice place to sleep. He decided to rest there until day came, and then go home to his parents. He closed his eyes and fell fast asleep. 
Tom didn't know that he had other experiences to go through first. The maid got up at dawn to feed the cows. She went into the barn and got a pile of hay. And in that pile of hay, poor Tom was asleep. Little Tom was in deep sleep. He didn't wake up until he was almost in the mouth of the cow who was eating the hay. Oh no! He said, where am I? But he soon saw where he was. He tried his best to not get hurt between the cow's teeth. In the end, whether he liked it or not, he had to go down the cow's throat. Inside the cow, Tom couldn't see anything. Where are the windows? He said. It's so dark and so uncomfortable. Tom was very unhappy with this situation. He couldn't see and he was scared. Worst of all, more and more hay came in and the space grew smaller and smaller. At last he yelled out, Don't give me any more food! Don't give me any more food! The maid was milking the cow when she heard the voice coming from it. There was no one else in the barn, so she was frightened. She jumped from her stool and spilt the milk. Then as quickly as she could, she ran to her master. She said, Oh, sir, the cow has spoken. What? You are crazy. He answered. But he went into the barn himself to see what was happening. When the minister went into the barn, Tom shouted again. Don't give me any more food! Then the minister was frightened too. He thought that the cow must be bewitched. So he had it killed. They killed the cow and threw the stomach away in a pile of garbage. It took Tom a long time to find his way out. Just as he stuck out his head, a hungry wolf ran by. He ate the whole stomach in one bite. But still, Tom did not lose courage. Maybe the wolf will listen to me, he thought. So he called out, Dear wolf, I know where you can find a delicious meal. Please tell me where, said the wolf. You can find good food at this house that I know answer Tom. You must go through the storeroom window. There you will find cakes, bacon and sausages, as much as you can possibly eat. Then Tom went on to describe his father's house. The wolf couldn't wait to find this house. And at night, he went in through the storeroom window. He found the food and ate until he could eat no more. When he was satisfied, he wanted to leave. But he became so fat that he couldn't get out the same way. Tom knew this would happen. So he began to move around and make a lot of noise inside the wolf's body. He kicked and screamed with all his strength. Be quiet, said the wolf. You will wake up everyone in the house. That's exactly what I want to do, answered Tom. And he screamed and kicked again with all his power. <laughs> Finally, his father and mother woke up. They ran to the room and looked through the crack of the door. When they saw the wolf, they ran to get some weapons. The peasant got his axe, and his wife got a big knife. You stay behind, said the peasant to his wife. If my blow does not kill him, you must attack him and rip up his body. Tom Thumb heard his father's voice. 
He called out with joy. Dear father, I am here, inside the wolf's body. Surprised and happy to hear his son's voice, the peasant shouted. Thank God, our dear child is found again. Then he told his wife to put the knife away, in case it might hurt Tom. Then he took a deep breath and struck the wolf on the head. The wolf fell down and died. Then they ripped open the body and took their little boy out. Ah, oh, said his father. How worried we were about you. I know, father, but I'm all right now. I traveled about the world, I experienced many things, and I am thankful to breathe fresh air again. Where have you been? they asked. Down a mouse hole, in a cow's stomach, and inside a wolf, he answered. And now I will stay with you forever. And we will never sell you again for all the riches in the world, they said. They both kissed and hugged their dear child. Then they gave him something good to eat and drink. They made new clothes for him and a warm bed to sleep in. But most importantly, they gave him their love. <laughs> <laughs>